Hi, my name is Dominique. I'm here in the middle of the day drinking red wine. Thought I'd do some makeup for you. I think I'm gonna do a 60s inspired Edie Sedgwick style look. If that sounds good, let's go. First things first, sunscreen as per usual. I also just, just moisturized. That's a good thing to do. Another little prep step for your, your skin. Just slapping the sunscreen on your face. Okay. Oop. Oh God, I'll get the eye boogers out of my eyes first. Okay, so first things first, I'm gonna prep my eyes with a long expired years old NYX jumbo eye pencil. Any sort of white base will do. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know about you guys, but I will use my makeup until until it's so gross that I can't anymore. I don't know if this is like not necessarily the most hygienic way to go about it, but I also feel like makeup companies give unreasonably unre short expiration dates for their makeup. Throw your mascara out after a couple months or something like that. Never, never in my life have I thrown a mascara out after a few months. Uh, I use it until, until it's drier than the Sahara Desert. Okay, most of the white I'm focusing on my lid space, but I do want to pull it up a little bit but most of it is gonna be here. Right now the base is really tacky and sticky, so if I try and put eyeshadow on top of it now, it will be difficult to blend. So I'm going to grab a cream color of sorts and I'll apply it here and then blend it into the rest of the, into the rest of the look. I might even, I think I'll grab a white too. Putting it on here. Okie dokie. Next step is taking, hold on, hold on. You'd think I would have learned by now and prepared the brushes I was going to use, but I haven't. And I maybe never will learn. You can't stop me. Oh my God, where is it? Oh, here it is, okay. Okay, after searching for 20 years, I found the brush. Clean it off on the back of my hand. I don't know, you're supposed to wash your makeup brushes once a week, but <laughs> I don't do that. Okay, I'm grabbing a cool tone brown, gray, a grayish color here. And you want a brush that is sort of rounded and small like this. That'll make it easier for you. Um, you could even take a little brush like that. You could even use one like this, which is flat on one side, skinny on the other side, and just use the skinny side. But if you've got one, this would be this would be the most useful shape. And we're just gonna deepen up our crease now. I have a pretty I have a pretty easy time of this. My crease line is pretty naturally defined. So I just Follow the natural crease line. Doing little windshield wiper motions here. If you have hooded eyes, I would practice this a little bit. Uh, so I don't have hooded eyes, so when my eyes are open, you can you can see that shadow. But if you do have hooded eyes, like so, I don't know. That makes sense. If you have hooded eyes and you can't see the color when your eyes are open, apply it with your eyes open. Look straight forward at your mirror and gently, very lightly apply this sort of pseudo crease on top of where you can see it. And then kind of keep like closing your eyes, opening your eyes, closing your eyes, opening your eyes, seeing and adjusting how it looks with your eyes closed and open. But that's the way to do it. If you do have hooded eyes, start with like say, Let's create a false little hood here. Start applying like where you can see it and then 
open your eyes and adjust accordingly. I just dipped in a little bit more of the color. I'm just deepening it, deepening it up now. Once I get over here, I think I'm going to not pick up any more color, but just pull it out. Pull the existing color out that's already on my brush and flick it. Follow my natural brow bone, I, I suppose. I might deepen it up even more, just a tiny bit more with, um, let's say, I've got this really pretty sort of it looks sort of, this looks blackish in the camera, but it's more of like this darkish bluish purplish brown. You could just grab a black, but I'm grabbing this darkish bluish purplish brown and I'm going to, like I just barely tapped my brush in there and I'm going to barely touch my, my skin here. Just want to deepen up the outer corner. Pick up a little bit more, a little bit on the inner corner. Like not a lot, just a tiny bit. The nice thing about 60s makeup is I know makeup right now is really fond of, or the trend right now is really severe, sharp, crisp cut creases. You don't have to worry about that with 60s makeup. This is it, aha, uh -huh. this is all you gotta do. You don't have to clean this up. This, this, is, this is what it's supposed to look like. Okay, I did the crease on the other eye. I don't know why one eye always ends up looking better than the other one, but it's this one. It's just probably one of those like absolute laws of nature. One eyebrow, one eyeball. When you're doing your makeup will be better than the other one. Moving on though, I'm gonna go back to my white eyeshadow and pack, pack it on the lid again. This will sort of, if any of the eyeshadow fell down onto the lid space, this will clear it up a bit. This will sharpen the line a little bit. If I developed any creasing from that ancient expired white eyeliner pencil, this will help calm that down. Next, I'm grabbing a black eyeshadow on a tiny, tiny little brush. And I'm mostly using the flat side of the brush or the, the sharp pointy side of the brush. And we're gonna treat this like eyeliner. Just dip it into the black eyeshadow, apply it very close to your lash line. Just get up in those eyelashes. You can even come at like a lower angle here and kind of wiggle it. If you feel like you have a hard time getting close to your eyelashes, that's a good way to go about it. I also, while I'm doing this, cause I don't know, my skin gets a little wrinkly. I'm old. Uh, I will like raise, raise my eyebrows up really tall and high to smooth my skin out a little. So I, I look perpetually surprised while I'm doing makeup, like, oh, oh, I gotta have the smoothest wrinkle-free eyeballs. But it, do, it does help. So I'm going for, I'm going for an Edie Sedgwick look. I don't know, Edie Sedgwick, but maybe like a little, a little, a little, a little more modern, but um, here's my reference photo. Oh God, my phone screen's dirty. Okay, so she has a more defined crease, I think, but she's got like, her eyes are really round and big and doughy. So I'm gonna kind of round out this inner shape, my inner corner, by, by adding a little bit more black than I normally would there. I'm taking tiny, tiny little strokes. 
This helps you with control. It helps you not apply a bunch of color, a whole, whole bunch so fast. It helps blend it out somehow. So tiny little strokes. Then I'm going to Normally, I feel like when you do winged liner, we sort of swoop it up, kind of following this line here. Normally, you would swoop it up a little bit. I'm just going to pull it straight down. Well, maybe not straight down, but I'm extending that line downward. But not too far. I don't want, I don't want, that might even be too long of a line, so I'll clear it up a little bit with my finger, but I'll, I'll leave it there for now. Mm. It's a wine in the middle of the day, kind of, kind of day. I like to start on my outer corner when I apply color because... All things considered, that's where I, I, I kind of am more comfortable applying that much black, I guess. So if I accidentally apply too much on the outer corner, it looks like I did it on purpose. But if I apply too much like in here, it, it, it can get messy pretty quickly. I don't know, a little raccoon-eyed. So start where you want the most color, start where you're most confident. So again, I'm kind of, normally I, I feel like it's a really standard kitty cat eye practice to not put so much liner or darkness in your inner corner. It sort of deepens up your eyes. It's less elongating. So if I had just put black eyeshadow out here, my eyes would be sort of pulled out in this direction. I'd have like lung sultry eyes. This will make them look more round, which I like actually. I think it's actually part of the appeal of 60s eye makeup is every woman sort of, like 60s makeup I find really sexy and also classy. And it's less complicated than you think. Like I'm, I'm telling you a lot of steps here but, and it maybe is a little time consuming, but Instead of level one, it's level two makeup, you know, but um, you just gotta be like a little patient with it, but it's not, it's not hard. If you got the right tools, it's not hard. So again, I'm going to pull this just straight down. Not curving up or going down. Okay, now that I've got a good start on my eyes going, I'm gonna jump back to the rest of my face. Since we did our eyes, my sunscreen is basically melted into my skin too. Grab a foundation. My skin has been, I don't know, um, needlessly aggressive recently. I break out mostly around my chin and when I'm on my period. But recently it's just been kind of a real asshole. I don't need my skin to fight me like this right now. Mm. How rude, stop it. <laughs> um, I like a plow, a plowing. I like applying foundation in downward strokes. I got little baby hairs on my face. This doesn't emphasize them. Get my jaw. I remember the foundation jawline days. I remember those days. I like to remember them and never repeat those days. No, thank you. Put a little bit more on the back of my hand. Oh, my hair is going crazy. For a person with a pixie cut, this is actually a really good time. 
because I've been planning on growing out my hair. So the fact that I'm missing haircut appointments is not the end of the world. I am afraid, if, if depending on how long this goes, it could very swiftly move into mullet territory and that's when I'll start getting concerned. But right now, I'm like, oh, I meant to grow my hair out anyway. Could be worse, could be worse. Okay, I'm gonna take my Real Techniques brush that I use for everything and I'm gonna brighten up my eyes a little bit with some foundation concealer, my RCMA palette. Brighten up the old eye bags, a little around my nose. I'm also gonna put some pale concealer foundation whatever on my upper lip. It's sort of like highlighting it. It's sort of like making my lips look highlighted and pouty and bigger than they actually are, but more tricks to fool men with makeup. Same on my chin. Let's pretend like I have a really chiseled jawline. Okay, I'm gonna grab a sort of fluffyish brush. There's a really cool tone color in here, like a cool tone brown and I'm going to lightly contour with that. Oh dear, that's heavier than I meant. And by lightly I mean I'm gonna just smack it on there much heavier than I intended. Okay, and I blend upward for the most part. I'm gonna pull down to my cheeks a little bit. A little bit on my temples. And a little bit on my big forehead. Again, if you got a little forehead, you don't really need to contour your forehead. Maybe bronze it if you feel inclined, but this creates shadows. It makes it look like your forehead is, I don't know more shadowy and smaller than it actually is. So you don't really need to do that if you've got a little forehead, but I mean, we, you don't really need to do anything. I don't need to put makeup on my face. I just want to. If you feel like you look good doing it, then what the heck? Who am I to tell you what to do? Again, just way too much, way more than you initially thought you were gonna put on. It's fine. This was gonna be kind of a light base day, but, um. I mean, who cares? I'm gonna put some uh, kind of my jaw a little bit right here. I really blend out the jaw if I'm contouring it. I like, I'll spend some time here. I feel like if you are gonna badly contour an area, if you are gonna add some shadow here, it's pretty noticeable here. So I will, I'll spend some time around the jawline, just really blend it in. Okay, now, I mean, I might as well just go, just go for it. I'm gonna take a light color now and same, same brush, same brush. And I'm gonna emphasize my jaw by applying light here. So it sort of looks like, I don't know, Mm. Looks like, oh, shadow ends here. Look at those hollow cheekbones. Oh, light is hitting right here. Oh my God. Wow, she has the same jaw as Rosie Huntington Whitley. Good for her. You know whose jaw I want? I want, um, God, Princess Buttercups. What the heck is her name? Most beautiful lady. Oh, now I have to look her name up. This is gonna bother me. Robin Wright is her name. She's got, she's got a good jaw. She's kind of got a good everything. If I could age half as gracefully as she aged, I would be doing something right. That I have kind of over contoured my face. I'm just gonna spend a minute blending around. It doesn't hurt, can only help. You might blend a little bit 
too much of it away, but um, you can always add more, you know, just spend a second blending out your face. Cool. Now I'm going to spot conceal a little bit. Get rid of these unwanted guests on my face. Okay, this is about as good as it's gonna get and I mean, I guess I could spend more time on it, but this is about as much time I'm willing to spend on it. That's the more accurate statement. Drink some more wine. I'd like to apologize in advance. Every time I edit these videos, I notice how loudly I drink. Just the loudest gulping sounds and I have really loud uh, mouth sounds. So sorry, you all have to deal with that. I can't help it, it's who I am. Let's add a little bit of blush. Not a lot. Wait, who's calling me? Restricted. Never mind. I'm not answering that. Going kind of truly for the apples of my cheeks this time. I usually apply way up here, but I don't think that's quite the 60s vibe, so really just right in the middle of my, my cheekbones. And it's a very light peachy blush, sort of, it's almost skin tone colored, it's just like a pink peach skin tone color. I don't want to overdo it, which I, I normally love overdoing it with blush, but uh, not today. Okay, I think I'm done with my face. Uh, you could set it with powder if you want to, but I'm not going to, so here we go. Eyeballs. I'm gonna grab my gross old expired uh, white eyeliner again, and I'm just hyper-focusing on this sort of tear duct area. Going nowhere else. Take the old, ye old blending brush that I used for all the other white blending. Tap it out a little bit. I'll actually apply some of this white right here too. Just outer corner. Take that brush again. Where to go, where to go, where to go, where to go. Here it is. I don't want to disturb that black eyeshadow line a little bit, so I'm kind of starting from the bottom and pressing it up. Blending from the bottom till I get closer to that black line. Not touching it, just getting up close. Now I'm going back, I'm gonna grab, oh, a similar grayish brown color, a little bit lighter than the one I applied in the crease, but not much. Kind of the same, but a little bit lighter. And pull it, apply to my lash line. Just kind of avoiding going over the white we just applied but this will help integrate the next step, which is to sort of create those like 60s lashes. We're moving away from Edie Sedgwick and now into Twiggy territory. If Edie Sedgwick and Twiggy had an eye makeup baby, this is what I'm going for. Going to grab black eyeshadow again and that same brush we used to apply the top liner and create a tiny little triangle there. Don't worry about it being precise. Tiny little triangle there and keeping a space. That's why I applied the white. I wanted it to be more stark, a stark contrast. But keep that little spot there. And then I will apply another little I won't call this a triangle, I'm sort of applying this flat and then pulling down a little bit. Kind of the illusion of shadow. Take
take another, skip another spot, hop on over to the middle here, pull it down, skip a little bit. Okay, another little speckle here. And with this one, I'm actually gonna pull it in just a tiny bit. Dip, dip a little bit back into the black. This one's a little bit longer, a little bit darker. And I'm actually creating a kind of um, point. Again, I applied the white there so I could have a, a contrasting color. But yeah, this is sort of an Edie Sedgwick thing too. So Twiggy had the, the lashes, you know. Edie had this adorable little point right here. This little definition and I thought it was the cutest thing in the world. I'll just darken these up a little bit, apply a little bit more black close to the lash line. I'm gonna do the other eye really fast. This video is already probably long enough. I'll be right back. And I need more wine. Okay, both eyes are relatively matching, so now it's mascara time. The only thing really different that I'm gonna do with my mascara this time is apply it on my lower eyelashes. I usually don't, but today I will. I feel like that's a very 60s, makes your eyes look big and doll-like. We're emphasizing those lashes. So when I started filming this video, my camera battery said it was full, but the low battery light flashing at me now proves that to be a lie. Ugh. Ow. Oh. Oh God, is there anything worse than poking yourself in the eye with mascara? That was the gentlest mascara poke I've ever given myself. That one was like nothing, but there, there is nothing more painful than poking yourself in the eye with mascara. And then you ruin all of your makeup because you're crying because your eye has just been savaged by the bristles of a mascara brush. Ugh. Ugh. Okay. My reference photo of Edie Sedgwick. Look at those brows. Look at those eyebrows. I'm not gonna do those eyebrows. I will make mine thicker, fluffier looking, but I'm not gonna do that sharp inner eyebrow situation. So I'm taking a very dry brow pomade and I'm going to flick. I start with the flat end of the brush and flick upward. And I'll actually show you on the back of my hand, dirty hand. So if you start at the edge of your brush and you flick upward, See how it sort of pseudo creates hair strokes almost? Like it's a pretty, um, I think it's a pretty convincing way to add eyebrow hairs. You have to be pretty light handed with it, but your shadow of your eyebrows naturally sort of falls here. That's where your eyebrows will naturally be very dark and then you can flick upward. You could also, with a skinny brush, take it and add eyebrows like this. Eyebrow hair strokes this way. I do this if I want to be like more precise, but I am going a little bit f further than my natural uh, brow line here. Dragging it down a little bit creating a thicker brow than I normally do have. With eyebrows, um, it's okay if your lines are really soft and feathery and fluffy and light. You don't need your eyebrows to be really sharp. I know that's a really popular Instagram thing right now. 
just having these super cut eyebrows, but in real life, um, nothing on your face is sharp. Oh my God, the battery's gonna die again. This happened, this is the second time I filmed a 60s look. You wouldn't know because the battery kept dying and I got so frustrated that I stopped. It's happening again. I think the powers that be don't want me to do this. What the hell? Powers that be? Back off. <laughs> Let me film the 60s eye look. Woo! Those are some fluffy brows. Okay. I'm gonna grab my spoolie and clean that up a little bit. Or sort of feather it out a little bit. Feather, feather, feather. And I'm gonna take a brow gel, a tinted brow gel, and run that through as well. Kinda emphasize my natural hairs again. Okay, I f want to clean that up very slightly around the edges, but not, not a ton. So I'm taking my, my concealer brush that I use for literally everything and I'm just sort of gently tapping around the edges of my brows. It's a dirty concealer brush. I mean dirty in the sense that it has concealer on it still. And I'm just feathering it around the outside of my brows. I'm also gonna emphasize my little, my little beauty marks. Taking a brown eyeshadow. Got these little freckles over here I like to emphasize. I got this one right here. This one here. I have a couple over here, not a lot, but I I would I would call these like more permanent discolorations than freckles, but I I'll, I'll turn them into beauty marks if it makes me feel better. And it does. Okay, the the last and a very crucial step for 60s makeup is lipstick. My sister got me this amazing Lisa Eldridge lipstick color in Velvet Fawn. Mm. You can just use any nude. Um, you don't need your sister to buy you an expensive, amazing lipstick for your birthday. And a lip liner. That's slightly darker than the lipstick you're about to use. And... Um, um, I like to overline my lips, just a hair. Don't want to get crazy with it. I'll overline the middle parts, not these parts. And also I feel like if you overline your cupid's bow and your bottom lip, it's not as clearly noticeable if you overline your outer lip. Your natural lip line is probably more defined in the center. So it's easy to get away with it there. Oh, got some on my face. Um, and I feather it in, I'll outline the outer edge and then feather, feather it in a little bit. With my lower lip, I, I overline pretty heavily. Don't judge me. Okay, take my beautiful, amazing nude lip color. Oh, did you see any of that? Was I covering it the whole time with this palette? Okay. Sorry. Uh, I just applied the lipstick. Ah. Okay, I think I'm done. I would recommend maybe if you're like a little oilier, um, setting your face with a little bit of powder, but I am a dry skinned woman, so I'm just gonna leave it here. It'll, it'll stay the whole day for me like this. Um, uh, I hope you liked it. I hope you learned something and I'm probably just gonna go finish off my alone red wine day drinking and play some video games now because uh, that's, that's the world we live in. Thank you so much. Bye.